Okay, thank you. So I guess maybe the entire beginning of this meeting was not. <laughs> um, so uh, anyway, the scholarships is uh, the residential scholarships is another instance where we uh, can award a scholarship uh, at the you know in advance of a, of an expenditure of, of a semester even you know we have to wait until sometimes the person sort of proves their their credential in that semester and then we do the settlement late down the road so those are two instances where we're trying we're still struggling a little bit with that need to figure that out. Um, and then the last thing in the, in the uh, director's report is, um, and I spoke with Julie about it, uh, that uh, we, we are preparing for budgets, uh, for 2023 budgets. We had originally thought, um, we started by preparing the expense budget, but I think what we're going to be doing is instead of bringing you that absent the revenue budget, we'll bring you both in November, do a preliminary discussion on that, take a look at what give and take we want to um, have on that, and then bring it back to you in December for both and finalization. So that's the path forward. Um, we're in pretty good shape on the expense side. We, we need to finalize the year. So I think that's all that. Um, so I don't know how you would deal with the question of the, of the uh, business scholarships. Um, do, is it in here that we didn't talk about it or do you? Uh, not really. I mean, it was just sort of, it's an issue that's kind of out there. Okay. So why don't you talk a little bit about what the budget amount is and what your requests have been beyond the budget? Okay. Gosh. So I'll take that question. Mm -hmm. um, I've been looking into that since June left. And right now, for 2022, the requested amount is at 9600 Okay. The budget, though, is only at 5000 Okay. So... And was doubled it in request. We paid out about one third of those, but um, we were just wondering if we could possibly move it, double it, and go to ten thousand and fulfill those. Um, those otherwise, we just have to push them off to next year. But those are the kind of the numbers that we have. So it's basically doubled in the ask five thousand budgeted and almost ten thousand is being requested. And those are ones that we would approve and. Mm -hmm. there, are two, there, there are two that we are waiting on um, confirmation of their receipts, which is what Alex was saying. So if accrual is a little iffy, so those maybe could fall off. So then it would just be about 7,000 requested. So there are two iffy ones um, that might not go through, but it would still go over $5,000. Maybe somewhere in between seven and 9,000. Um. So is the increase due to outreach that was done or? So actually we haven't done any, out oh. any outreach. Okay. So that is another reason why I think we, I would suggest pushing it to 10,000 because we haven't done any outreach and we already are almost for, for the past 10,000 already. So if we did any outreach, I assume we would. Mm -hmm. I know Jane did present at certain you know, sort of grant opportunities and it's been out, you know, we've been doing sort of soft stuff. Uh, so it's not like we've been totally quiet on it, but. Um, <clears throat> Essentially but, left no outreach. Certainly. And uh, three of those that, three of applied since she left with no outreach. We anticipate next year that it probably would be closer to 10 as well. Well, that we're going to, we've already in our expense yeah. side, we actually have a proposal to increase it to yeah. reflect what this so. year is. But the question is about, you know, so it, it, if you look at the, at the at the guideline on the website for the resident scholarship, it sort of very clearly says, you know, first come, first serve, right? And then, mm -hmm. and then, but it doesn't as much on this. And, and it's not to say that we shouldn't do that, but you shouldn't have mm -hmm. the same approach. But I think it's just an open question right now because we were not as explicit. <clears throat> Question is whether or not the five thousand is a, is is the cap that we want to uh, hit and stop at, or is it something that we wanted that we were sort of thinking of, of as more of a guide, and 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 that if it happens to exceed that, that maybe we do an unbudgeted overage to to cover the difference. So, you know, I uh, obviously we set those budget numbers for a reason, but I I don't really have as long as everybody qualifies i don't really have an issue with increasing the budget a little bit i i mean it, we don't want to do it in everything that we do but i don't really have that big of, a, of an issue with it so 
I don't, I don't have know. any problem at all with that. It's five thousand dollars. We have over two million, three million yeah. in assets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going from five to ten. And, and being that it wasn't a cap on it, like you said, this wasn't on there that we only given this much. It should be open to everybody who applied thus far. Yeah, I mean that, and that that we can we can uh, maybe treat it that way in in this case because yeah. we're facing a situation. What we should probably do though in the budgeting for next year is be pretty clear on each yeah. line, like yeah. this is a not to exceed number or this yeah. is a guide. Right. You would just ask for approval to exceed the budget. Yeah, you wouldn't change the budget this year. You yeah. just come and get approval from the board. We'd have to all agree that. Um, right. That it's okay for you all to spend more than the budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and then I, I honestly, I think our whole budget is like that. Like mm -hmm. anytime you want to go over it, you just need to come back and ask. Yeah. That way, it's not on you guys. If anything goes sideways, that yeah. you spent the money without asking for it. Yeah, yeah. So that protects you all too. So, yeah. in my opinion, I, that's that's what I do. And we can get you where exact number is once you can type in their receipts so that's part of the grant and qualifying. Right. That can't happen unless we I can't even get to that point unless we say it's unless you all say it's okay to go over. Um so we might not even go over by that much. It just possibly can be nine thousand five hundred, but it can be less depending on so why don't we plan on doing this, which is just uh uh well. In, in the in the case, what why don't we plan to come back in November with a sort of list of of the de the details that we know at that time. Uh, come to you with a formal request in November to increase the budget accordingly, and then then we can sort of settle in with with everybody's. Um, how the how the process works currently is like they either yeah. How it works currently is we can't even get to the point where they like get their receipt to make sure they can get paid because they have to qualify at the end of the year, and then they need to send the documents. They have. Oh, made. so you're saying we need to provide approval, pre-approval? Right. Yeah. Have to wait. Yeah, you're approved. Mm -hmm. Which is a problem that maybe next year we could change because mm -hmm. it, it draws it out much longer, obviously. But that's currently what. We're it would be easy to just allow if the board agrees that you can go up to ten thousand dollars. Right. Yes. Between now, you know, for twenty twenty two, you guys just figure it out. Okay. okay. Do yeah. we need? Can we have a motion to? For yes, that? I would like to motion that okay. we can allow the staff to exceed the business scholarship program budget line, which is currently five thousand. Allow them to exceed that by an additional five thousand dollars. For the calendar year twenty twenty. And a second to that. Second. Oh, yeah. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Hey. Um, so uh, moving on here, unless there's anything else on that. Um, did, you, did you have a question? Another question though about like uh, payables versus. There's some question about that was more of a, of a heads up that we are your financials are going to not reflect certain things oh, that have not booked as liabilities okay. yet, okay. even gotcha. though we have voted. Them gotcha. Okay. So, Thank you. And ju ju just a general issue and, and uh, objective for us to figure out a way to not be in the situation. Yeah. Um, okay. So I am, unless uh, there's anything else, I'm going to move into uh, just the, the financial documents, which should have been in your. Um, packet. So let's scroll through and put them up on the screen. So the first, is that okay? Mm -hmm. um, so what you have is in order, you have the August and then September balance sheets. And I, just, I, I was like, do you put, I'll put all the balance sheets together or do you go by month? But I, I did August, September, and then profit and loss, August and September. And then there's a profit and loss versus actual August and September. So that's the sequence in the, in the packet. <laughs> um, so just uh, quickly flying through this, uh, you'll see that the, the uh, uh, total cash and equivalents is 2.806 million, uh, broken up according to the various banks that we have uh, some of the uh, activity in. Uh, the first financial bank is the one that's more, most active. Um, you have under, um, other assets, you've got your uh, no receivables, which are the uh, 
uh, rapid response fund loans are out there still, and um, see those change slightly from month to month. So you have a total notes receivable of 271,800 plus, um, making total assets 3.078 million. And uh, that's our liabilities and equity breakdown. And going to September, you have, uh, again, the same layout. Um, and then really, probably the, the thing to note is the total current assets of 2.805 million. Uh, you do see some change in, in the case of, uh, of uh, loan repayments happening month over month. There's some that haven't yet, and so we're, we're trying to pursue that and figure out what's going on for total assets of 3.071 million. To the August uh, profit and loss. Um, Karin sent you sent a note, and you're right. I, I don't know why this is not going to change. But your uh, uh, the Ivy Tech, first of all, is uh, SBDC, and second of all, is not a professional service kind of brand. Um, see an income of three hundred three hundred dollars, or three hundred six dollars. Um, and then on the expense side, um, this grant of 45,000 scholarships, 12,750 for a total of 1950, uh, meaning that the total expense was 46,960. Uh, and it come to 46,525. And then uh, September. You have uh, interest of 430 one uh, expenses, uh, bank service charge, uh, and then a couple of the grants uh, that have uh, grant categories that have been expected against for a total of 7652, total expense of 7662, and uh, income of uh, 7231. All right. And then moving into this area here, this is, uh, if you recall, I think we started this last uh, last month where um, uh, the controller's office is putting together a, a sort of view of, of um, year to date and, um, and budget just to sort of lay out where we stand against and, and really document what the budget is. One thing that's been a little bit of a challenge um, is to try to, as we're sort of packaging together kind of budgets, year over year budgets, and trying to establish for 2023 and give you some history of it, categories are changing, you know, from year to year. And we're, we're going to try to try to be a little bit more standardized about how we how we label stuff. Um, it's been a little bit difficult uh, to, to um, really sort of go year to year and try to make apples and apples. But you'll see here, um, I don't know if we need to go through this in great detail. Uh, from an income perspective, we're uh, about 170,000 over budget. Expense perspective, we are uh, bottom line, uh, well under budget at uh, 70,781 versus a budget of 331,710. And the, the major moves on the expense side um, is. Uh, Is really, uh, really the grants at this point. Is so a, those are grants that have been made that have not been funded, correct? Those are grants that have been budgeted but are yet to be paid out. So we're under, we're under budget relative to, to the grant issuance. But, but have they been awarded? Well, that's part of the problem. In some cases, they some have, right? And in some cases, they haven't. So we're just trying to track that down. Um, so then the, the 45 here is really mis, misplaced. It should be under the, um, uh, let's see, the, 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 this over here, the professional fees should be up here. So that would be a zero against budget. And then really, um, the only thing that's outstanding is the community management fee, <laughs> some accounting. And pro uh, project administration, which you remember is the cost associated with uh, the private response fund. Uh, so 
So the bet and business scholarships we were talking about, the 5,000 we paid out around 3,100 against. That's well under running the DEI training scholarships. And I think may come, come to you with a lower number possibly next year. Although we were thinking we were talking about it internally, we're thinking instead of maybe doing that, we should try to push it a little bit more aggressively because I think it's really important. So we'll come, we'll come to you with a recommendation on that. And then the rest of the scholarships also lag a little bit behind the budget. So that was in uh, August, same layout, same situation in September, slightly different. Um, so we're still um, well ahead on, on the income. And then on the expense side, we are um, still well below, just need to be like some catch up on some of the grants. <clears throat> so can you, um... So it sounds like you're sorting through to figure out what's been awarded and what is still in the pot waiting to be awarded. Yeah. And then once you figure out those two buckets, will you then record a payable for the ones that have been awarded? And is that your plan? Yeah, not a payable necessarily, but at least some capture it somehow and it's to, to demonstrate that we're we are committed to it. Right. So uh I don't a payable, I think, would be if we actually had issued out the uh um well, maybe maybe if they sign, if you yeah. sign the commitment yeah. and it's got an amount and Book it in a pay, payee so. and a date, yeah, it's a payable. Yeah. So then that will fix this. That'll year. make it more current budget. But it won't fix the issue of the bucket of money that we budgeted and hasn't been awarded yet. No, and that's the kind but of. But to your point, like with DEI, mm -hmm. it can be really hard to give away money. It sounds yeah. like. Like the wrong statement to make, but it can be really difficult yeah. because you need people to want it and you need to find people that actually match up. So that could be really exciting if you could, you know, could or yeah. anything else you deem worthy. And I think there was, you know, there, I think it's the first year of, the, of that uh, program, right? Uh, I think it was set up at the end of last year. I don't remember if it was the first or second. I think it was the first whole year. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if we like, did a little it, bit at the end. Of I believe that it was, yeah, the, uh, the end of 2021, mm -hmm. because okay. I, I was actually trying to get one of the scholarships at that point in time. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so end yeah. of 2021. Yeah. yeah. It was when it was year. Year. Yeah, that's yeah. the first time I ever. So, you know, I think there's probably some guesswork as to what the right amount is. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I think that we can focus on the dollars, but we but really more think about like, all right, let's figure out how it was promoted and whether we want to do it more. And then if we do, then what is the result of that? And um, mm -hmm. and then we can, then the budget can reflect that. that I mentioned. Okay. This has always been a problem that we've had. We don't know what's been spoken for out of it. We've always had yeah. that yeah. issue. Yeah, the payable would fix it. Yeah. yeah, completely. And it would just be like your receivables by the flip side. Yeah. So that's it. I think that's it for the financials, right? Yeah. All right. If there are you going to make those couple changes that were mentioned on the SBC? DC. Yeah, and to be honest with you, it uh, should have been done a while back. So, uh, so the, the the one I think the change that is the most flagrant, if you will, is the fact that uh, that the professional services is where the Ivy Tech slash SBDC grant is. I think it was called Ivy Tech because it was budgeted as such, and so I think it was carried from the budget file into uh, this file. But we can. Well, no, the budget has SBDC Cook Center and. And mill as the line. Is Those three. Yeah, I don't know. You could just okay. get the budget. And yeah. Make it all match. So we'll make we'll move that into um, the uh, grant, which is where we should be okay. set. That's a good point you made too um, about the, how the line keeps changing and. Yeah. Whatever your recommendation is, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, it'll just make life easier for the future, so it that will. people can carry it from one to the next. Or poor Lisa, there is uh, who's our fellow. <laughs> I, I task her with going back over the last three years to say, all right, you know, just give us a uh, year over year and just normalize it. And she was pulling her hair out. She, she was trying to do that. So. so, if I can have a motion to on the financials with the recommended change, move to approve with the change. With the change. Okay. Second. Second. Sure. Uh, all in favor? Say aye. aye. 
proposed. So we were approving both the uh, August and September okay. financials. So, all right, all right. So uh, we now move into the business. Unless you have any other nope. exciting questions, I would like to introduce the foundation of Monroe County Schools. See if you might be able to come to the table and well, we can make room for you. My support. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll help you guys on some of the grant awards. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're always happy to help you with money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to stick them up there and well, you're uh, okay? Or yeah, how do you so want? We see the seats for one minute and then oh. we might just so you can be on mic and on camera. Oh, oh so we can be on camera. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much for inviting us to be here today. Um, and most importantly, thank you for this grant. Um, I don't remember how long we've been doing this, but it has been a while. Um, Doris, Sam said it was, was the founder of this. Um, so if that gives you any ideas of how far back it goes. <laughs> um, for those of you that are new, um, this goes for supporting students who live in the zone or for the schools that have children who live in the zone. One of the things that we do know now with school choice, you can actually have kids in the zone that go to any school. Um, and it does happen. So um, they are they are spread around, um, but we have historically kept this grant to the primary areas of where these where the students are. So we're not sprinkling it out, even though I just want you to be aware that the students have sprinkled out. So, but for the most part, we're keeping it involved in Fairview, Summit, Templeton, Tri North, and those those areas. So that seems to be the heaviest concentration. So what you have first was the review from last year. Um, and I guess we can just kind of look at it from the only thing I really kind of want to point out because you guys can all read through there um, was there is two areas in Fairview that we are requesting that funding has not been spent. Um, we are holding it in a restricted fund. Um, it's in two areas where just with the pandemic and the overwhelming nature of what happens sometimes at Fairview, um, the Generation Genius Science subscription. Uh, just didn't happen last year, and they would like to move that money into um, what they call VMAP, and Deb's going to talk a little bit more about that, um, but to transfer those funds there, otherwise they would be asking for that money this year, so they'll go ahead and transfer that there, and then in the well-managed consultants, um, they did complete this last year, but there is an extreme shortage of, they're called guest teachers, substitute teachers, whichever word works for your brain recognition. Um, they had to do it last year without being able to bring in those guest teachers, which is where the cost overlay was. So um, that money wasn't spent just because they're not available and they had to manage it in other ways. So again, to move that money into VMAP, which is lowering their overall ask for the VMAP for this year. So those are the two areas there. I don't know if you, how you guys, I think last year we had this with one category and then you guys did a motion to approve to, to accept those funds. So we just want you to be aware of them. We never want to hide that, <laughs> that the money's not going where you originally approved it. And then the other one, it's still going, but it's in Tri-North. Um, their outdoor learning center, you funded money there last year. And just with um, the build out and everything happening there, um, that has been a little bit slower to be built um, than what we had originally anticipated, but they are definitely on Hoosier Hills docket and um, that is gonna be built um, this spring. Unless you have any other questions about last year, that's the, the main areas of it. Everything else was spent um, as, as we requested and very grateful for those fundings because it did definitely make a large impact for these children. So then I think the question to us is um, in those, in the case of, you said it was in uh, Fairview and then the two cases of Fairview where um, Generation Genius and well-managed consultants, mm -hmm. you would want to repurpose that into the VMAP? 
right. category. And then in the case of Tri North, you want to move the. Uh, or There's no kind of, movement. It's just to let you know that it's a delayed. It's, it's a delayed build. Okay. Yeah, it's been a little delayed. So you haven't have you gotten the funds from us? Mm -hmm. that, okay, you, you have it. You're just saying you haven't yeah, spent it. Yeah, yeah. This is the this is a, the allocation that was voted on in, in uh, November of last year for this year's funding. To uh, I'm just making some moves on that. Right. Yeah. So I guess the question is, do we? Object to repurposing the funds in a, in a different way for this year's allocation and or delay. well, there's only one repurpose, correct? Yeah. So, so um, does anybody have any issues with repurposing the funds for the VMAP? This was last year's money, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we need to vote on that, or um, Larry, do we need to vote on that? To be able to just extend the funding, I'm sorry. Just, just to, they already yeah, have the funding. They have, we've allocated the funding, they're just making some changes to the original proposal. Uh, in some cases, delay, in some cases, repurpose. Was there a, and I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to this, but was there a specific expiration date on the agreement that happened? I would have imagined it would have been probably this calendar year, right? Yeah. That's what that's what we usually do. I would say just to be on the safe side, if you wouldn't mind, someone could make a motion just to approve the funding for a definite date and extend a definite date. And that's cool. Yeah, that's fine. So we have three items that we're talking about. Uh, generation Generation Genius would be spent this year, correct? Uh, well, if it's going to be spent this year, we don't care, right? The school year. Yeah. Cool. Oh, oh, yeah, they're they're ready. We're extending <laughs> the expenditure date of yeah. the original yeah. Okay, so so it could yeah. go after this calendar, is what you're saying. That that's what we're saying. Not that money. They they will actually pay for this as long as long as you guys are good with it going there. So there it's like those licenses all come up the first of August. Okay. So for the B. Okay. So that Generation Genius would be reallocated to the mm -hmm. that will be spent this year. Uh, guest teachers that will be spent in next calendar. Mm -hmm. no. with the VMA. The VMAP, just to help you out, the VMAP is around six thousand dollars, right? Yeah, the VMAP is really yeah, expensive. Okay, both of these. Both of those toward, toward yeah. VMAP. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then the Tri North will be that will go into next calendar. It'll just get spent in, in the spring, right? Yeah. So, um, so we need a motion to uh, reallocate the two two categories and to extend the one category for trying to work. I do the motion. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the, the Generation Genius uh, Science and Well Managed Consultants will be reallocated into VMAP, and then the Tri North funds can be used during the next calendar year. Paul made a motion. Sure. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Thank you for letting us know that. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to these two wonderful individuals, um, Dr. Deb Prinkett, who is on the elementary side, and Dr. Marque Winston, who is, you're, they're both assistant superintendents. It's just one's on elementary and one's on secondary. I'll go first. Is that okay? Sure. Elementary. Um, so I'll start with Fairview. Um, we just talked about the VMAP resources. They're pricey, but it is really a great intervention. It seems like our math scores struggled. I mean, even pre-pandemic, it was it's an area of need, but we've seen it even more since COVID. Um, there's been missed learning opportunities. So the fact that we can expand VMAP, that's still a request. Um, even with it, moving some of that additional money, um, you can see that it's still listed on the 22-23 because it is kind of a pricey intervention. It's got a software component where the kids can go online, they can interact. It's got some game format that's engaging and kind of entertaining, but there's also a consumable that goes with it. And I think that's why it's so pricey because there's a consumable and the software. But together, it's a great intervention package and we are seeing some, some gains with it um, and improvement in our scores. 
So um, they're asking for that, the literacy resources. I don't know how in depth you want me to go on each of these, but um, sound walls have become a big thing. We used to have something called word walls and you would walk into classrooms and you would see high frequency words that students would see in their reading a lot. But what we're seeing now is a lot of sound walls in the primary grades because we're trying to teach uh, students that different letter combinations make different sounds. So it's more in the in the primary, kindergarten, preschool, first grade that you're seeing a lot of these sound walls and blends and um, and what sounds they make. So that's something that they're requesting. Obviously, magnetic letters, you know, to help uh, manipulate again, giving them that hands-on feel. Libraries, uh, you know, ask for some additional support there. Wobble chairs, that's kind of uh, self-explanatory, but we talked before about how some students um, are more successful if they can move around a little bit or have a fidget or have something um, to kind of occupy them while they're listening to their teacher and following directions. Um, so so that those aren't cheap, <laughs> those wobble chairs, but it really does help some students with their focus. Uh, coding, STEAM, and math. We continue to try to promote our science, you know, technology, engineering, arts, and math by incorporating a lot of different games and, and coding robots too. Uh, we have VBots, we have um, all different cubelets, we have a lot of different programmable uh, items that kids can touch and, and program on an iPad. So there, that's kind of what Fairview is asking about. Do you want me to go see if there's any questions on Fairview before I go to Summit in Templeton? I did have a quick question. Yeah. The VMAP resources you mentioned earlier is 6,000. So is this 30 to 40 part of that 6,000 for 2022-23? Yeah, I believe they're they're asking for that in addition. Um, it, they wouldn't they want to use VMAP at all grade levels mm -hmm. as their goal because they are seeing progress with it. So it's my understanding that yes, they wanted this for the 22-23, and I believe they're moving some of that other funds that we just talked about from, mm -hmm. from last year to, to help it. Yeah. And it may even, I don't know the exact cost of VMAP. I don't know if it's it, 6000 on the nose or where it fell. Yeah, so your funding is going towards um, district MCCSC pays for sixth grade. and But they're seeing such success at the others that a lot of these schools are wanting it for the other grade levels. So this particular one in this application is set so that they don't have a lapse on the license. So this part here, the 32 is for the online component of it. So that next August, when they go, they they will have it there immediately for that. So the money that they're moving, I believe is for the the, the part that you talked about that's the uh, consumable. consumable. Thank you, I've lost my word. Yeah. yeah. So this will cover it, I guess. Yes. It's not like a partial request and to find money somewhere else. No, no this, okay. this our sixth grade. Our sixth grade is being okay. funded through. Okay, that's right. Okay, great. Um, anything else about Fairview? Okay, Summit, um, decodable readers. Again, those are predictable books where they study letter patterns and then the book is full of words and a story that relates to that <laughs> pattern. So they have to build students' confidence when they're reading a decodable book because it's an area they've been working on and they recognize it and they start to feel like a reader. So those books are really important, but we need a lot of those books because they're pretty short little books and it go, kids go through them pretty quickly, uh, but we're always trying to get more decodable readers to help boost our, our students' confidence level with reading. Res Kids, that's an online uh, program where kids read a story online and then they answer comprehension questions. And there's all different levels in that reading and they can select different stories. And, and like I said, it's a nice comprehension piece. Math fluency intervention kits, that includes lots of manipulatives to help them with number sense and math facts and computation. Um, any questions about summits? Questions? Okay, all right, Templeton, move it on. Uh, Templeton, they um, really wanna focus a lot on their literacy. Um, so they, Wanted to purchase some Hagerty, uh, Hagerty phonics. It's a it's a phonics and phonemic awareness program that we are implementing because we have um, we have a reading English language arts series that is great. But what we're finding is a lot of students need a little bit more support in the phonics and phonemic awareness. Those letter sounds, kind of like the people that wanted the sound walls up in Fairview, they're um, trying to adopt some curriculum here that helps support them with remediation of sounds. And that's what Hegarty and Bridge the Gap, 
I know, I just noticed that. Bridge the, <laughs> gap. Yeah. Bridge the gap. Bridge the gap is the intermediate addition to the phonics and phonemic awareness. After the kids already have their, their phonics and phonemic awareness sounds down, then bridging it to comprehension. So that's what the bridge the gap. Spire are high interest, low reading decodable books. So um, that's what the Spire book series is. Um, same thing with the Pioneer Valley, just trying to get more books in their hands is what we're really trying to do here, because we feel like the more books that they can have in their hands, um, they can take them home, but they go back and forth, sometimes they don't come back. <laughs> and so we really appreciate all of the support you've given us with buying more books, because we want our kids to have them. And then the A to Z license, or Z to A, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just that um, it's the same, it's like an online online reading program, kind of like the Rest Kids up above where I talked about Summit. And then some math remediation resources, more manipulatives, um, more hands-on things for them to increase their math fluency. So that's a little bit about Templeton. Any questions on the Templeton? Excellent. Thank you so very much. So for the uh, Tri North, um, we're, we're really excited. As you all know, we opened a new building. Um, this past school year. And so we've also transitioned principals. So we have a new principal, Dr. Chris Finley, who had previously been at the Child's Elementary. So he's the new principal and began right around November-ish, early December of last school year. So it, he's been really excited to be able to take on the school and is going to be very appreciative of the fact that you're willing to allow us to, to spend the funds for the Outdoor Learning Center. I just want to make one comment regarding the Outdoor Learning Center. Um, one of the things that we're really excited about as we move to uh, create that and work with Hoosier Hills is just the uh, conti continued focus on STEM and STEAM learning. And so our teachers there are really excited about having a very creative and innovative outdoor learning space. And so we'll be very excited to, to invite you out, hopefully by next fall, to be able to see that. Okay. For the dollars that they're asking for for the uh, upcoming school year, Really, they have a, an amazing learning center, which is a library, and they're really looking to have some additional supplemental resources of diverse backgrounds, um, high interest ability books as well, and just a variety of, of learning materials that they want to uh, equip the library with. And so that's really the only request that they have at this particular point in time for the upcoming school year. Questions on the Tri-North? So the total request is for $35,000. And I think that that matches our budget amount. So we just need them. Does anybody have any questions of, of our yes? If not, we need a motion to approve the request up to our budget amount. I just a okay. question. Yeah. Um, I can't remember how many years it's at, been at 35, I think maybe since I've been here, which has not been that long. But um, I just wonder, it's more a question for the, for the board as we go into budgeting next year, um, given that we've just hit the $3 million mark on our assets and that, um, acknowledging that there's potentially uh, $220,000 to two fifty. dollars that hasn't like if if all of our grants that are budgeted are booked at the table, I know that won't happen, but let's say so now the 250 is going to come out of our assets because you're going to book them. Hit. We still have a lot of money, right? And it seems like, um, of all the valuable grant requests we get, which there are a lot of valuable ones, this one just seems like we could entertain a conversation around increasing the 35,000 to something higher, right? And which is you know, perfect for y'all. Um, but um, but knowing too that you're here like on the fly, like kids you spend another 15, um, you would I would assume like to go back and figure out what that would be. But like just to for us to consider um that so we could be giving him. them like mm -hmm. I want to approve 35, but I also really actually want to approve 50 right now. But right. we don't know what that would be for because it catches you off guard. But it just seems Hopefully like doesn't catch things off or she might be. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just I mean I appreciate the depth of information and the time put into this, but I just feel like maybe we could um offer something additionally. And as I said, I'd be prepared to do it now, but I don't want to put you guys on the spot 
So you're wanting, I might, let me clarify I heard, that I heard this, for this year's funding, for this year's 35 or for next budget. I would personally, for me, I don't know how the board is feeling. There's a lot of people nodding heads. I don't know how people feel. I'd be willing to do it now, but um, certainly we would need information from you all Background. about what that would be. So in the interest of uh, bird in the hand, right, uh, do we want to maybe break it up? And I hate to have you have to come back or maybe some of you, but if we were to um, approve this as, it, as it's been documented, uh, and then and then if you have the opportunity to come back at, at our next meeting or or even yeah, send absolutely. information in to, to, to allow us to consider that an overage of uh, uh, 15,000, would that that work for us? Yeah, I'm right. over that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and I would even be fine if you provided some very extensive information. So I would even be fine with if you didn't come back and just provided some. To send it in as a yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Looking at all the work they've done thus far, I don't have a menu at all. Just um, the progress of China or Fairview have nephews that go there. It's very very helpful for the students. So I would agree upon that. So I guess what we have now is someone needs to probably make a motion on our budget amount, and then we'll make a separate motion on the uh, a potential overage. Uh, with it, I was kind of hearing that they would supply the background information. Move to approve the thirty-five. Okay. Yeah. Uh, second. Second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Okay. Then we've got the. Additional fifteen on the table. Someone want to make a motion. So it's a motion in this case that we would be pre-approving an incremental fifteen thousand. So I think it's such, upon their uh, upon their information. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Can't we just do that next month when we get we, the information? We can. Yeah, we can do that yeah, next do month. That. So, but I guess just so you know, we're probably okay. prepared to do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How, how's that? That's a good <laughs> <laughs> Is that jingle bells with edge? <laughs> and I mean, I guess from my perspective, you know, 15 is great. If somehow you've got some great program that you could put down in $16,250, I mean, by all means, we may only fund 15, but I mean, you guys always do such a good job just asking for what we budgeted, but you could be a little aspirational here and we could do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's the whole point of what we do. Yeah. Uh, right. I'll hold Dr. Pinker back to put it. <laughs> <laughs> but it is one of our, I think, one of our better bets as an organization in terms of activating money that we have mm -hmm. through the school system. So no, it's real. I told you the other day, this is one of our favorite yeah. presentations. Yeah. 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 I did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's very much yeah. Please know that it does it does make an impact. I, I know sometimes it is really hard when you look at three thousand dollars for the and when you look at the books, sometimes you don't really feel that. But they do they get dog eared, they get, I mean, they are used, used. So yeah. And it makes a difference. So I had to learn a lot about community awareness and <laughs> the difference. Well, you've noted. Yes, uh, and the science of reading is not what you and I remember growing up. It's yeah. not. The way that they're teaching it today is totally very much scientifically based and, and brain research and, and those types of things. So, yeah, there's yeah, there's just a, an extreme amount. I think it was interesting noting the sort of lingering effect of the pandemic also in some of these cases and how mm -hmm. that I mean, mm -hmm. I, it feels like you're sort of dealing with more than you're ordinarily dealing with. Yeah. So that, I think that- I think you guys still are. One of the literacy coaches told me that, and she said this last year and she said it's better this year, but she said it's for those early primary grades where the reading is mostly auditory mm -hmm. skills, they're teaching it in an auditory fashion. So a lot of that phonemic awareness is all auditory it did not translate through these devices. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like they did not, even though the lessons were made, it didn't translate through the devices. And so these kids just really almost missed a year and now they're behind and it just, it just mm -hmm. continues to compound itself. So, mm -hmm. so, I mean, I know the district's very big on getting all these kids caught up, especially the, the ones that are by third grade, because 
You guys all know that beta. Mm -hmm. but we, we don't want these kids living that the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. I can tell you as a parent, I was not a great teacher at mm -hmm. home. So During the I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More than you ever thought, right? <laughs> yes, more than I ever thought. Mm -hmm. It was hard. So mm -hmm. I commend you. Thanks, Polly. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, thanks, thank you. You. thanks for your vote of confidence. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Um, <laughs> next on the agenda is uh, unfinished business, and there are uh, two things that we wanted to cover with you. Uh, so one is the, <clears throat> if you remember the mill that approached us last meeting to uh, extend the duration of the, the slot grant. Um, one of the things that came up in the meeting was two things before considering it, um, which we need to vote, we need to vote on the uh, question of, of matching. And so um, Chaz, you did some work on this with Larry. You want to take us through that? And we... Yeah. So we should have got the addendum. It's basically the same, but then we put in the matching. So we went back to them and asked if they had put this, and their match was for um, 2,450, and their request is for 2,350, and that's the roof and lighting. That is all of the that same facade side. So the total expense is roughly five thousand dollars, and they paid half of it. We also went back to the original agreement. To be clear, the original agreement requires a match, and any payment made on reimbursement basis from what's paid anyway, this to have to be a match. So, so, okay. so that's that was in the original agreement. We okay. didn't change that on the agenda either. Mm -hmm. So that's why structurally it looks exactly the same. And we've already paid this already. So they're just not going to be reimbursed for them. Mm -hmm. Do we need to do anything else on that? Well, I think we do need to vote on uh, uh, on the uh, attempt to yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. And then just to note, I'm on the board of the mill. We do this every time it comes up. I just want to state that. And I think you've said in the past, as long as I can be objective or I can't remember. Yeah, right. Yeah, disclose it. And, yep. uh, so I just want to highlight You're that. Unpaid. Right, volunteer board member. Right. So we need a motion to extend the facade grant for the mill. So a second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Thank you. Thanks for chasing that down. Um, and then finally, uh, arts grants discussions. So, um, so for today, this is also old business because we started talking about it last week. So, and I talked, I spoke a little bit with Julia, um, Julie, and the the um, let me lay the situation out, and we can decide how we want to handle it. So, we in 2021 had allocated. Uh, $40,000 in operating grants that was tied to kind of the recover forward, clawing themselves out of the pandemic, you know, period for, for arts grants. So this was different. This was an incremental grant allocation to these the standard uh, BUEA arts grants. Um, that was not used uh, in 2021, uh, but there was an operating grant cycle that was implemented in 2022. Those have been vetted. Uh, those grants have, uh, amounts have been um, have been you know laid out. Uh, some of those recipients reside in the in the uh, BU in the enterprise zone, and so the question at hand is, um, and and speaking with Julie, uh, who correctly thought it was not a good idea to try to have to carry over monies from the previous budget somehow become come into play because we hadn't explicitly carried it over as part of the budgeting process. The question at, at hand is, do we want to uh, consider these grants, these operating grants? Recognizing that that forty thousand effectively kind of rolled back into the, the the pod, but but it is for budgeting purposes closed. Do we want to consider uh, covering some of these grants for those members for those art groups and um, that are inside the enterprise zone? And uh, Holly can take us through some of the details, uh, but cover those as an unbudgeted augmentation to the 2022's budget, right? So does that all make sense? That's what we're trying to figure out. So our zone arts grant budget is 80,000. 
Correct. So I just want to clarify that there actually was a vote at the end of last year to carry that 40k from last year forward into this budget. Oh, the understanding okay. was that we would have $80,000 to work with this year. Okay. Yeah. I just that. All right. So do you want to take us through the grant recipients very quickly? And I can. Uh, yeah, I just I just want to make sure everybody is comfortable going forward with that before we make a little. So that, that was a misunderstanding. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so again, I just want to clarify. We did this briefly last month. Um, so these organizational grants are only for 501c3 groups. They must operate primarily in the city of Bloomington. They can apply for up to 5% of their overall operating budget. They cannot receive more than $5,000 for these awards. Um, they also have to have arts as their primary mission. And of course, their work needs to be within the EDA zone. Uh, when we evaluate these grants, we look for whether or not these organizations actually have the capacity to carry out what they say they're going to do. And you know, we know many of these organizations, they have a great history of doing this work. We also asked them to demonstrate how they're impacting the community, make sure they really are getting large audiences and getting them thinking about arts and connectivity and community within the zone. And then of course, we always look for a, a commitment to equity and inclusion. Are they doing active work to reduce barriers so all can come and participate in these activities? As part of our review cycle that we had last month, we identified four recipients of grant funds that reside within the BEA that we think would be great people to receive funds from the BEA as part of the Zone Arts Program. And I believe Alex sent out um, an addendum to the packet that um, gives an overview of these. Um, so I'm quickly just gonna run through these five organizations. The first one is the Bloomington Creative Class Center. They are beloved within the community. They do great with education and children up to adults doing glass art. It's amazing. I talk to people all the time who actually come from Illinois to take these classes. They frequently collaborate with other arts organizations to just enhance art and bring this skill to the community. People love this group. It's, it's amazing. Um, and we've um, suggested that we award them the total amount of $5,000. Um, they're really hoping to kick up their work more as they're coming out of the pandemic, still struggling, but building back to be able to offer more services to folks living in that area. They also have this great portable glass kiln that they wanna take out more to schools to get more students involved in doing this kind of craft. So it's great. Um, another one is Stages Bloomington Company. Again, this is a children's oriented theater group. They did a couple of performances at the Waldron Art Center when the city was running it earlier this year. They did the Cat in the Hat. This was a sold out audience and it was just great opportunity to see these kids learn this skill that obviously, you know, they're learning projection, they're learning theater, but it's also just a skill that can translate into other parts of these kids life and just to see the joy on their face as they're producing these works for their family was just amazing. So again, stages working with children in theater, we're recommending to get them about 36 50 for their award. Um, the next is Bloomington Early Music. So this is an organization that really focuses on bringing early music to the masses. So I think sometimes we think of Bloomington Early Music, this is something that's confined to IU. People in the community don't really understand how they have access to it. Early music works to change that. They have an annual festival where they work with several venues in the BUEA zone to showcase this music. And they don't just play the music, they do educational opportunities, they have workshops for students. They'll stop in the middle of a performance and they will teach you what everything means. They will make you sing along. Not cool, but it's good, it's how you learn. Um, but they also are now focusing on, for every year that they do this, they focus on showcasing an underrepresented population. Last year they did women, this year they're focusing on Middle Eastern and Latinx artists. So again, great organization that's really pushing the boundaries of education and making sure underrepresented, underrepresented groups are involved both as producers but also audience members. So great work there. Um, we're recommending we give them the max that we can, $3,800. Um, second to last is Artisan Alley. So this is a group that actually has a few different storefronts through the zone and they provide a variety of resources to artists. A lot of these artists are artists that are coming out of IU who have these amazing resources as students. They have their own studio spaces, they have wood shops, they have kilns. 
once they graduate, they can't go back onto campus and use those facilities. So they are struggling to find studio space. They are struggling to find places they can use these equipment. Artisan Alley meets this need. They have a tool library. They offer studio spaces at discounted rates. They have a print machine. They have a little kiln. They have it all. And as we've been doing this arts feasibility study, um, we're finding that this is the kind of facility that we need to be providing more of to get young folks to stay here and do arts and reinvigorate this old guard that you know does a lot of work here. So for Artisan Alley, we're also recommending we give them 35. And then last is Bloomington Chamber Singers. Again, this is an amazing group that has historically brought music and traditional music to the masses in Bloomington. And again, they work to do a lot of education with elementary students. And they're also taking the initiative to produce work by composers of color. So again, just a great community that's working to expand the audience and represent folks who have traditionally not been represented in the arts in this art form. Um, so again, we're recommending um, 2,500 be allocated to that group. Um, in all for this cycle, we will be asking the BEA to give 18,450. Um, that is in addition to the 22,156 that you allocated for zone arts projects um, that we discussed earlier in this year. So I think that would put us just about at that 40,000 total. So that would be half of the amount that we had total to spend for this. So are these all operational funds for all? Correct. Of these? these are operation specific. So, so there's not a breakdown in budget like the arts project grant where they're like this much for advertisement, this much for building a wall, this much for supplies. This is just, hey, y'all, keep your lights on. What we're finding in talking to arts organizations is they're just not seeing a return to their venues in the way they were anticipating at this point in the pandemic. I just spoke with the director of the West Chungli a couple of days ago, and he was just telling me he's speaking with artists who just cannot get full audiences there. Mm -hmm. And those artists are seeing that across the Midwest. So this is just an indication to us that we're seeing there and other places that people just aren't ready to come back and fill auditoriums. That, and that means these organizations are still struggling to keep the light on. And if we can't help them keep the lights on, a lot of people are just going to be missing out on these opportunities to develop through the arts. So what is your criteria to decide the dollar amount? So um, again, we look at their overall operating budget. And usually when we look at these, we say, okay, we look at the applications and we're like, okay, we like what we're, you're doing. We know you can pull it off. Um, we know that you're working to meet this large audience. We know you're breaking down boundaries to be more equitable. You know, so then we say, okay, that's great. And when everybody, when for the groups that have those qualities, we're like, okay, yeah, we're gonna highly fund you. For folks that we know are doing the work, but need a little help and could do a little more better on writing their equity statements, they're like, okay, we'll give you mid-level funding. And then there are some folks that were just like, okay, you're not there yet. We might need to have a conversation before we agree to amount, award you large funds. We generally give them like low to no money. But after we've made those decisions of high, medium, and low to no, then we go back, look at that overall organizational budget and do 5% of that, and then just make some decisions of tweaking about, okay, we'll give you the maximum amount because we love you, or we'll give you half of what we could give you because we like you, but you could do a little bit better. That's how we generally make those decisions. And I'm so glad that you guys are making these decisions. <laughs> 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 ancient history when we were yeah, Who knows on a Sunday for this one? It was. <laughs> So we can't tell, I mean, 5,000 of them is the max, but for also like 3650 could be the max Correct. of the yeah. percent Yeah, what I can share for these is I believe with the exception of Artists and Alley, we did opt to give all four of these organizations the maximum amount. By definition, the largest budget any of these could have is 100,000. That's correct. And we've so actually, smaller. based on this cycle, we made the decision not to fund anybody whose operational budget was over 100,000. We just felt like they had enough going on that they didn't need our support as much as these other organizations. I may be alone on this, but I I get told Alex this the other day. I I. I understand maybe why we would fund operational funds this year, 
but I just don't think that that's our place. Yeah. I really don't think that that's our place. Because if people can't make it, I, you know, I guess the kind of business person, if you can't make it, you, you, you just don't offer it, you know. I, you've got to figure it out, so. Well, I respect that you, um, before the pandemic, you know what I mean? Like, right. that would have been president before the pandemic, but we are all seeing times right now that we've never seen before in business and life. Um, we should act accordingly to the time. I, like I said, I think I would agree with it for this year, but I don't think I would agree with it going forward. I just, I just don't think that that's the place of the meeting. I, I would like to say something. Um, as far as, you know, these are educational things for adults. And I think that if we are willing to put energy into our kids, we also need to put energy into the adults there. Because when kids see adults learning and going out and finding these opportunities, they, it becomes a natural thing for them. So I think it's really important that some of these things are funded. I guess I, 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 those are all great points and I agree with parts of all of them. Um, in terms of the funding the operating budget, I would have a big, I would actually take issue if they were for profits, Yeah, but they're all nonprofits. And so I do think that within the mission of the BUEA as a, Nonprofit funding another nonprofit. It's like giving a, a, it's like any foundation giving a grant to some other nonprofit for programming, which ends up being operating. Because I don't, you know, like the early music associates, like I'm not sure what else we would fund there besides operating because they're programmatic in nature, they don't generate a, a thing. And so for me, I would support it because they're nonprofits. So to me, it's a different uh, filter of evaluation. Well, I guess I would feel comfortable so uh, funding a program, uh -huh. but not their operation. Right. Not yeah. their salaries, yeah. not yeah. their yeah. electricity, I know. I, that I know. stuff like that. I have a real issue. Yeah, I, I guess this is a, is a good philosophical it is. discussion to yeah. have maybe during the budget discussion for yeah. next year? I mean, I, I, I think that there's, uh, I totally hear what you're saying, which yeah. is, you know, and, and, and yeah. I think that um, I don't know that anybody is necessarily comfortable saying BUEA will commit to operations for the forever, right? right. But, but I do think that there's a somewhat unique, uh, and, and I would probably suggest that we might be in that same situation next year, so that as we talk about the budget coming up and talk about ways in which grants can be issued to arts organizations, we may at least think about ways of trying to, you know, figure out what 2023 is going to look like from a, from a post-pandemic perspective and whether or not we, you know, people will climb out of the hole entirely. Um, for the purposes of today, I think we're all, I mean, I, we're getting a lot of anecdotal feedback from arts groups that they're just not there yet. So if we can get comfortable, at least for this allocation, and then talk about it next mm -hmm. month, we'll come to you and we probably will just at least list out some operating funds uh, for 2023. We can have that discussion in terms of next year, but I don't think necessarily anybody's suggesting, you know, the BUEA should be in this business perpetually. Which is well, and I actually yeah. think we may be entering a time of a new normal. Mm -hmm. I mean, normal mm -hmm. is gonna look different. Yeah. I really think that for all of us. Yeah. There is a way to, um, I agree with you too, that we could go ahead and put this and evaluate how we do it. Just like we're doing everything else, we're trying to, especially for people who are new, just trying to get on paper, right. sort of the rules of engagement of what we fund and how we fund and why we fund, the kind of everything we've all been sort of asking for that additional uh, in-depth right. on paper, because it does get confusing. And, but a, one way I offer for us to consider when we do go down that path is that we could do programmatic, but when they write their programmatic budget, they are by definition adding in some salaries and overhead. Right. Because to do a program, you have to have, and that's real common. So they apply for a program, like I'm, I don't know, ours and Allie is going to do a something something event, and they have a budget that they turn in for their application. The whole thing's going to cost $5,000, $3,500. 
and they line item it this much of supplies, this much of staff salaries, this much of mm -hmm. building, and then it does actually become part of their operating budget, but it's tied to a specific program. program. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's okay. super common to do. Okay. The other way is someone applies for it and they say that. 5% of what we are asking for is going to go to our operating, mm -hmm. like, here's the budget, and, you know, it just, so anyway, there are ways to do all of that. Right. It might satisfy everybody's right. way they look at it. I think we all want to help them out with just the responsibility of trying to approve all this money. And, and yeah, yeah. Right. but I would motion that we, I think we're agreeing we want to approve this for teaching your proposal. Mm -hmm. I would motion approval of the 18450 for the 2022 operating arts grants. Yep. And it comes out of the zone arts grants as opposed to the city art program, right? Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. Is there a second? For second. That? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Holly, all right, for thank all you your all right. <laughs> Okay. Uh, thank you for that. General discussion. I would just, oh, yeah. Um, this is about safety in the urban enterprise area. So, myself and other business owners have came to realize we're up against an uphill battle with vandalism, homeless, um, and everything else over there. So, I wanted to know if we have, um, I guess, what I'm asking is we have the opportunity to grant something towards safety and security towards small business owners to help them with going through this transition that the urban enterprise area is having. Because I myself have put up new lights, new cameras that I can't afford. Um, I walk the grounds <laughs> at times of the night when I just should be sleeping um, because the safety issue has came so far that um, you can't sleep at night thinking about your commercial space being vandalized or broken into. Is this something that we can visit? Maybe one way I think you're raising that. I mean, I, I certainly we're getting a lot of information from really everywhere, but, but there, there's definitely an issue out there and people are spending a lot of time and money uh, trying to address it. Um, maybe the way to at least put it on the table for discussion would be to, to bake it in as just a line in the budget mm -hmm. next year and see if we are comfortable with that. And uh, you know, we'll try to come up with a number that we think might be uh, work well, considering. I think not only a number, but there ought to be some guideline, and there's got to be something yeah. behind it. So, yeah. so, but I don't think it's something that we can't look at at all. Okay. It is a huge problem in our neighborhood, uh, but I'm I'm afraid it's bigger problem than we're equipped to handle. Yeah, to, to Julie's point, which is I think we need to figure out exactly what. Is eligible, like what are we talking about? Right, yeah, it's, it's huge. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll try to pull together some, some thoughts. Um, certainly, by the time the budget gets voted on, maybe not uh, entirely baked as a plan for, for November, but we'll try to get some thoughts together. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else in the general discussion? If not, that looks like the next meeting is November the 9th. And thank you all for your attendance and for being here. And enjoy your day. Thank you. Good service. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.